So we've got edge pairing. What I've done is I've just converted this into an axis cube, oh, an axis cube, uh, hexagonal die pyramid, not a four by four hexagonal die pyramid. So what I'm gonna do now is solve it as such. So let's do something we didn't have to do with a earlier version um, and line our centers up. Start off with the green side here and we'll just line this up appropriately. Find the other brown, which is here. Line this up like so. And that's what we'll start off with. This green doesn't obviously doesn't belong here. It belongs more over here to be paired with this center over here. And if I did my homework, then all these centers are where they need to be. I don't have to do that funky algorithm to try to change that. Okay, if you get into trouble, if you happen to have bought this but none of the other mods and you're having a hard time with, these la with the last two centers, let me know. I can do a walkthrough with that for you. Okay. So let's get our cross, green to green. So this lines up here. You can see we're creating the green false side over here, the dark green false side here. I actually, <laughs> we have to be careful how we move this. So actually I can't move it from here. I have to move it from the bottom because I can't change the orientation here. And now this has to come down to greet this. So I have to go, now that I've moved to the bottom, keeping this secured in its position, one, two. Then I move this in to line everything up and then one, two, to bring it in. So I just had to be careful with how I move that. Any type of moving should not be by rotating this because now I have specific rotation that this has to be in. So another green, here's another green. This will line up with the pink. So this will be the pink side. Now, there's no true ba um, gold side like this. So I can maybe move it in like that. But this has a very specific orientation also, this pink side. So before I do that, let's move it back and I'm gonna to have to double turn this to meet it. Double turn, bring it in so that this can match up, and double turn. I experienced the same thing when I was doing the circle cube, if, if you recall, same kind of thing. All right, continuing across, we have this, this, and now we need to get this, which is appears to be this guy. It's just all turned around. So let me move this out of the way, like so. Now once I've done that, I have to coordinate this appropriately so this can find its way up to here, coordinated with this. Move it up so that these greens can coincide with each other. And then I'm gonna move this up like that. So I just had to coordinate a little bit. Green to green, green to green, yellow, yellow, and this gold color to that gold color. So now I have one more to get, which is this. And this one's easy. I'll just double turn this down. Line these up so these colors coincide and bring it up. What I'm doing is just an extension of what I was doing with this puzzle over here. Okay, now lastly, I have to find the other light green, which is right over here, this guy. Actually, this we just pull up. Okay, so we have our cross here. And we managed to coordinate it with all these colors. It was just a matter of positioning. Um, Okay, now we put the corners in. Which corners go where? Well, this looks like it probably takes just a, a gold color here. So do we have such a thing? Yeah, this one over here. So we go turn, turn, not quite oriented right. So let's move it on by and keep doing this until we move it in. Turn, turn, not quite yet. And one more should do it. Turn, turn, so we're good, and up. Okay, next, this looks like it's a three color. Um, light green, uh, gold, pink, and blue. Do we have that, do we have that? Uh, maybe this guy over here. So let's move this down. And see if we can't roll the green part into here. Turn, turn, and turn. Very nice, beautiful. We're actually carving out the first part of our die pyramid on this side. This is just gonna be the pure brown. Right here. Let's move this down here. And let's see if we can't roll this in. All right, killer. We got that here. Now we just do the green side. 
Boom. Turn, turn, turn. Okay, so first side we have all that set up just for the first side. Now we do the middle layer, which is all edges. So let's see what lines up with, with what. Anything without white, of course, goes in. So where does this go? Well, it appears that this probably goes down to here. And we can check that out. Just, yeah, so that lines up nicely here. Because we have the red to go here, the brown to go down here, and the blue here. So turn, turn. Turn, 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 and down, so we're good. So what else do we have? Well, let's not focus on much of the white ones here. Uh, it appears that this probably goes, well, where's a green one? This. Let's just bounce this out. I think all of our middle ones are down in the middle layer, but in the wrong place. Turn, 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 and turn. Okay, now, hopefully we'll set up a cascade reaction where everything is gonna go where it needs to be. So this is gonna come down here. Turn, 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 turn. Turn, and down. Okay, so we're good there. Uh, this guy looks like it'll find a nice home, probably down here. And then this can be bounced maybe over to here. Ah, I'm sorry, actually this will come down here because this gold is gonna come down to here. So turn, 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 and down. Okay, so far so good. Just have to get this guy in line. And it looks like this is a good contender, this guy over here. Move this into here, this will be here, this silver will come down here, and this pink will find a nice home with its friends over here. So, turn, 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 and down. So we have the middle layer. So now all we have is this. The top layer so this is the payoff this is where you have to do a lot of your thinking so first thing to do is unlike the lower order version and more like these guys we have a specific orientation that this is supposed to be which means we don't have as much variation with what we can do with this side we might end up with a parity with this but first let's see if we have the strict 4x4 parity so this is rotated up with the white, this is rotated up with the white. You see this white is down, and this white is down, which means we have an L formation, and it also means we don't have the three up and one down parity. So we have an L formation over here. So uh, we've got F, R, U, R, I, U, I, F, I. We have our line over here, as you can see. So do it again, F, R, U, R, I, U, I, F, I. So now we have this. But we still have the potential of having a kind of a parity where we have to do that um, R, U, F uh, algorithm because this is very specific with where it needs to be. In this case, I got lucky. I got lucky because one is in. If one is in and three are out, then we're good. Then all you have to do is hold it here, do the algorithm that rotates these, and eventually you, you'll get them all in, in the right position, possibly. So let's see what happens. This is in. We'll go R, U, R, R, I, U, R, to U, R, I, and that does very nicely by putting all these in the in the right position there. So. Now, if we did our homework, we shouldn't get into any other parodies, and we don't. This is where it needs to be, and these aren't. Now, again, what could have happened is I could have had two in and two out. To do that, well, we'll go over how to do that. So let me pose another scenario where this was in just like before, but I see another one in here. So we have two in and two out. 
So this is the other kind of parity situation that you're going to get with this. Um, the same that you that we had with uh, the other cube. So just to go through this, what you want to do is you want to organize it to where you have one in and one in just opposite that. That's 180 degrees. So I'm going to keep this here, do the R U R U R 2 U R I, which will keep this here, and rotate these around until uh, you get the proper one in here, which in this case will be this. So it's going to be R U R I U R to U R I. It's not going to be there yet. You're just going to switch it to here. So R U R I U R to U R I. And oh my goodness, this is out. This is in. This is in. But these two are out. Now you can try to do the URF algorithm that we've done in previous uh, tutorials, but this is going to end up spinning around. By previous tutorials, I mean the cuboids. That's just the URF, then 2U uh, split here, then 2U split here, then FRU. But again, it will put these back in, but you're going to rotate this around and get yourself in an endless loop. So. The way that you would do this, if the middles mean something, which they didn't in a cuboid but do here, this is the variation with this. It's the variation of the URF, holding it here to where you have your two sides that you want to flip um, next to each other. You're basically going to be moving this in an overall UI form. So you're going to go U with the top and then UI. So it's like you just split this to a UI, basically. Then an R and FI, so you're still doing the URF. Then you do the URF again, but just your eyes become non-eyes and your non-eyes become eyes. So basically this just, uh, we'll just do the top here. U, R, I, and then a normal F. Now just like you did your middle U turns, this is something like that too, only they're gonna be U and Ds. You're gonna now split this back. You split this to a UI, now you're gonna split it to a U. So we're gonna take the top and do a UI and then a U. So basically we just split this to a U. We're gonna split this bottom D, this, this here, to a D as well. So we're gonna go DI and D, and then start your FRU portion of it. Um, so start off with the I, so F I R U I, and then just, just do it again, but now uh, substituting I's for normal, so that's F R I, but now finish with a D. You just split it with a, with a D I. So bring this back and D I. All right, so actually what that did is that flipped these guys back. So if you're in a situation where you don't have specific orientation for the center, you can do just like a three by three. If you do a specific orientation uh, and you have two in, put them right across from each other and do this uh, variation of the algorithm, not just for this puzzle, but for any other type of puzzle where the center now has specific orientation. Now it's just a question of putting these in. This is where it needs to be. This is not, this is not, this is not. So it's exactly the same corner uh, switching algorithm. U, R, UI, LI, U, RI, UI, L. So everything is where they need to be. These guys just need to be rotated in. So just rotate it in the way you do the very last stage of a normal 3x3. Turn, 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 turn. turn, and hopefully here finally turn, 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 and now this part here, turn, 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 and you did it. You basically solved the master um, HD or the 4x4, four four, the four layer um, hexagonal dipyramidal puzzle. But the things, the points to take home, uh, this is something that's mass produced. You can pick this up, uh, I believe, at the HK Now store as well and various other places um, offered. But uh, uh, but basically, uh, uh, this holds to the mechanism of how to deal with specific orientation of the centers, how to make sure that if one center doesn't lead to all the other centers, place your corners in 
so that you can prevent that type of, uh, of, of parity where you have to redo your centers and that if it's a specific orientation, um, dealing with all those specific 4x4 parities in addition to the specific orientation with the URF um, modification. So that's it for this layer version. Wonder what other layer versions look like. Thanks for watching.